Good afternoon, everybody, um, and welcome to this the second um, webinar from the you, from the EOSC Secretariat project. And um, today's webinar, uh, we're very pleased to welcome um, the European Commission. So we have Lina Munari from DG Connect and Michael Shoup from um, from DG RTD, uh, who will be uh, presenting some updates and next steps for the for the European Open Science Cloud. And we'll be following that with a, a quick uh, question and answer um, for, for all the participants. And we kindly ask the participants to use the Q&A button, which you see at the bottom of your dashboard, uh, so we can, we can address questions straight after their, pres their presentation. What we'd, uh, what we'd ask you to do is, when the, during the presentations, if you have any questions to ask, then you can pop them in there and we'll try and monitor them and pick out some of the, some of the Questions. We'll then be hearing an update um, from uh, Sarah Jones, who's uh, part of the EOSC uh, Executive Board, and she is the chair of the Fair Working Group. And she'll be giving us an update on the EOSC work plan, which has just been uh, made public this week by the Executive Board, and also an update on the progress of the, the various working groups. Uh, and then finally, we have An Andrea Grazilla, who is from Technopolis Group uh, and is the, the, the manager of the EOSC Secretariat project. And she'll be giving, uh, he'll be giving an update on, uh, on co-creation engagement opportunities through the EOSC Secretariat project. So we have a bit of a packed agenda and it's been a busy few months for the, for the EOSC in terms of new projects starting and uh, and various events such as the, the, the joint consultation meeting, which was organized by DG Connect and DG um, RTD. So with that, I think I can hand over to uh, our first speaker. So just having a little, a little problem here, um, trying to connect with, uh, with Lena at the moment. So um, what we might do is if we move on to um, Sarah, I think, is that, oh, would you mind Sarah uh, picking up? Yeah, um, that's, that's fine. A, a if you want to bring up, we'll thank just invert you. the agenda. Yeah. Um, thank you very while much. While I'm chatting, you can sort out the audio with Lena. Okay, thank you. So we'll just get your slides up. Uh, okay, so, so just to let people know, um, I'm Sarah Jones from the DCC. Um, I'm involved with the EOSC Executive Board and I'm going to be speaking about the work plan which we've just published and giving you an update on the various groups and the activities we've had to date. Um, so I think I'll just take like 15, 10, 15 minutes to give that overview um, and then um, I don't know if you want to pick up with the um, co-creation fund after that and then we can have questions on on those aspects oh here we go okay go. so the the latest news we have um is that we've published the work plan um so if you jump through to the next slide you'll see the um, url where you can access the work plan um this is available on the ec's website and essentially the contents of the work plan it's a, a quite a short document we talk about the first iteration of EOSC that will be available by 2020. We outline a timeline for delivering that and we talk about the procedures and the required inputs. And I'll just give you an overview of what's in, in each of those sections. So first off, the first iteration um, by the end of 2020, if you can advance the slide. This outlines um, what we need to deliver in this next um, just over 12 months now. Um, we need agreed and tested rules of participation. So that defines um, how different users and service providers need to act within the EOSC. We're currently doing an analysis of the existing national infrastructures and policies so we know what can feed into EOSC. And the sustainability working group is looking at the financing model, the legal entity and the post 2020 governance structure. So this is thinking beyond 2020 and making recommendations for how things go forward. And then in terms of the, the kind of core elements, like the main technical architecture and functioning of EOSC, we need the federated core, um, an initial set of data, serve, data and services, um, and then to think about how this works um, together and enables the interoperability, we'll be defining the interoperability framework, a persistent identifier policy, and metrics for both fair data and also service certification. 
You can see the timeline we're working to. We've already been working over the summer. Um, and the basic principle here is that within this first year, within 2019, we have initial drafts and outlines. So the initial landscape mapping, the outline PID policy and rules of participation, an initial set of services. And then we continually test and iterate um, so that by the end of 2020, when we're handing over to the new governance structure, we have kind of agreed a first version um, that's working and we know is good for end users. And the procedures we're, we're working to, there are a number of inputs. The um, working groups at the executive board has defined and not, you know, kind of starting from scratch and reinventing the wheel. Um, there's five working groups, which I'll go on to outline, um, but two of them, the landscape and sustainability, are a lot more kind of strategic and political. So they have a lot of inputs from the governance board. And the other three working groups, architecture, fair and rules of participation, are more about the core functioning of, of EOSC. Um, so we are drawing a lot of inputs from the EU funded projects, from different national initiatives and the broader coalition of the doers. So there are a number of groups that are really defining and building EOSC and our role within the exec board and the different working groups is to coordinate and endorse the different approaches that we're putting forward um, for the EOSC. And that's, that kind of endorsement is really done through lots of consultation and testing and iterating. And there are two main vehicles which we're using to do that consultation. The liaison platform that's been set up by the EOSC Secretariat project and the Research Data Alliance. So this is the kind of basic process of how we work, which we've outlined in the work plan. So the next um, section I want to talk about is the working group specifically and, and what we've been doing. So there are five working groups. The landscape working group is looking at, you know, what's happening in all of the different member states and the general EOSC landscape. Rules of participation, as I mentioned, are defining the, the rules that service users and service providers need to abide by. Um, architecture and FAIR are really the core building blocks of EOSC as an infrastructure. And the sustainability working group is looking at um, the legal entity in the post-2020 governance. So next slide. We are proposing or have actually set up a couple of other groups. There's a communications task force. Now this isn't a working group per se. It's a group of people from the exec board, the EC and the secretariat who are tasked with dealing the, with the EOSC brand, registering the trademark and dealing with comms. And there are two new groups that we've proposed setting up, one around skills and one on the international angle to make sure that EOSC isn't a silo in Europe, it, it collaborates with um, the Australian, the African and, and other um, initiatives globally. Both of these are expected to run next year. And I think with the international group, we'll probably have to have a different structure for setting it up because it won't work as well to just have nominations from um, the governance board because that's very European focused. Potentially it might be a separate working group or it might be international advisors within each of the existing working groups. So we need to think about the best way to structure that international engagement. The next slide. Um, the five working groups so far have largely been formed by nominations from the governance board. So every member state has been able to recommend people for the groups. We have had some nominations from the exec board as well. Um, specifically in terms of the fair working group, we tried to bring in missing skills and to, to bring gender and country balance. And the architecture group has also accepted nominations from Horizon 2020 projects because that's really the core, um, the core activity which is going to build the EOS. We have also had contributions. Um, as I mentioned before, the working groups aren't doing new work. They're not reinventing wheels. So all of the working groups are seeking inputs from existing projects and initiatives. Um, the architecture working group members have also nominated um, people to task forces to work with them. And working groups are doing different things. They're either inviting presentations from Horizon 2020 projects, or they might bring experts into different meetings or telcoms or commission consultancy reports. So there's different ways that people are contributing to or engaging with the working groups. In terms of numbers, um, the working groups generally have somewhere between 15 and, and 
40 members. The architecture and fair are the largest groups and there's a good spread of countries. You can see here um, the various different countries that are represented in across the different groups. We had initially proposed to have an open call for membership of the groups, but in our last exec board meeting, we decided against that. And that's for a number of reasons. Um, the groups are actually much larger than we expected them to be. And we found in the initial setup over the summer, we found that we actually have a very good coverage um, to address the remits that we have. There are a couple of skills that we know are missing, like legal interoperability um, and information around business models. Um, so we will be commissioning a couple of um, studies via the co-creation fund, but we didn't think it was necessary to add additional skills into the existing working groups. So to give you a quick rundown of the progress to date, um, the the Landscape Working Group, they've drafted their initial document. This um, will be presented to the Exec Board um, next week in Helsinki and to the Governance Board thereafter. And the final version of this will draw in um, extra information from the Infra EOSC 5B projects, which are just getting started now. They expect to subcontract some of the analytical work about member state preparedness, and they're going to hold a validation workshop in January next year. The sustainability working group has done a lot of work over the summer and um, they've started by developing a straw man document um, and this proposes an iterative approach so a gradual building of EOSC where we start with an MVP for public funded researchers and then have further iterations to kind of progress towards a digital marketplace where we're looking at public sector and industry as well. They plan to commission a couple of studies around legal entity and business models and their main recommendations and results are due um, in quarter three of next year. And you can see um, the various interactions they've had so far, um, beginning the kind of planning of that straw man document over summer, and they've done consultation around that with the governance board and at the EOS consultation meeting with various projects. Um, and that will continue to, to be iterated um, and to be put back to the governance board later this year. The architecture working group have identified five key areas of work, um, AAI, the persistent identifier policy, glossary, metadata and data access. And they have started setting up two of the task forces around this so far. And within FAIR, we've identified, we've essentially split our remit into four areas. And we've set up four task forces, and these are the, the leaders of each of those. So we have a group looking at fair practice, um, and that will feed into work on the interoperability framework. We have a group looking at PID policy, and they'll be joined with some members from the architecture group. And we also have a group looking at the metrics for data and, and service certification. Um, all of those four task forces, they all set up over the summer. Um, they've been defining their scope, we've been developing a, a work plan for the FAIR group specifically, and they've been reviewing the existing work coming out of different projects and, and looking at the projected inputs that are coming in the next you know, six to 12 months. Their outputs to date, the, the FAIR practice group have been defining a matrix so we can map the relative practice and maturity in different disciplines. Um, we've been working with Freya to draft an initial PID policy to consult on at events this autumn. Um, the metrics group have been liaising with FAIRS FAIR and the RDA group on FAIR maturity and uh, the quarter seal for service certification. And we've also been trying to plan um, what the EOSC interoperability framework should cover and how it should be formed. And we'll be um, running consultation on that at the RDA event next week. And then the final group, um, the rules of participation. They've also been working on scoping and partitioning the scope of their group. Um, and that's because the rules will, will vary for different stakeholders. So there'll be different rules for users and service providers. And they have a number of questions which I'll be consulting on next week at RDA, um, thinking about things like how the rules of participation maybe should constrain what service providers can require of users, how users can discover EOSC services, and should EOSC minimize, you know, how can we minimize the barriers to, to taking part? 
and also how we think about this in an international context, how the rules apply to non-European users and service providers. So the other main piece of news is that we um, have a couple of events coming up. We have um, a one day workshop at the RDA plenary next week, where we'll have a number of breakouts from the different working groups. And there's also the EOS symposium. At the moment, there's a call out for that and registrations open. Um, so please do come and engage with us at those events. And that's all I had to say, I think. Yeah. So um, by all means, I think we're going to pass on to Andrea now, but you can start putting questions in the chat and I can respond and then we can have a, a Q&A as well. Perfect. Thank you very much, Sarah. That was a, a great overview. So yeah, what we'll do um, is uh, we'll pass on to, to Andrea now. So good afternoon to my fellow speakers of the webinar and, and then my good afternoon especially to all the viewers of the webinar. My name is Andrea Grisilla, I'm a consultant in the Technopolis Group Belgium and I'm also the coordinator of the uh, EOSC Secretariat project. Just to give a, brief, uh, a very brief overview, we can start already from the first slide, thanks Nick. The EOSC uh, Secretariat uh, is a project of a duration of 30 months whose uh, objective is to support the uh, governance of the EOSC as it is structured now following the EOSC implementation roadmap issued in 2018. Uh, the EOSC secretariat is therefore supporting mainly, offering uh, 360 degrees support mainly to the executive board of which Sarah Jones is um, uh, one of the members and the uh, working groups. In the second stage, EOSC Secretariat is also supporting the uh, subgroups of the governance board. Just to give uh, again a brief, a very brief, a brief explanation, in the governance board you have the members, uh, delegates of the coming from the uh, EU member states and the associ EU associated countries, where the executive board is a smaller group made of if uh, 11 participants coming from uh, either industry, uh, research field, etc., neutral experts of the European Open Science Cloud. Your secretariat is also being uh, meant to be the interface between the EOS governance and the stakeholder community and the whole community of uh, researchers, uh, industry representatives, uh, uh, companies, research infrastructures, and so on, that are working for the European Open Science Cloud. How do we do that? You have already a brief, a very small hint here. Uh, we have, uh, for example, open consultations, the annual forums, the creation of a knowledge base, um, meetings with the stakeholder community, plus, and you see it on the left of the screen, an amount uh, of almost 6 million euros for co-creation resources. This is a topic that I will explain in next uh, slides. Next slide, please. This is another overview of, we, of what have, uh, I've just explained. So the EU Secretariat, you see at the bottom of this line, offers the support to the main entities that are forming the uh, governance of the European Open Science Cloud Governance Board, the Executive Board, the five working groups of which uh, we have heard just heard the explanation and the current activities, plus the stakeholder forum now to be renaming stakeholder community um, structure that is going to be further defined in the course of the, of the years to come that uh, it will collect the representations of the stakeholders in order to allow them to participate fully in the governance of the European Open Science Cloud. And at the same time, we support also other initiatives that are connected to the governance of the EOS, like e other EU-funded projects, the national initiatives, and the coalition of uh, uh, doers. Next slide. You can just click many times here. This is a, an overview 
of the timeline for 2019 and 20, where the EUSC is supporting the uh, executive board and its emanations, uh, um, uh, uh, which means the uh, working groups in delivering the uh, various documents and outputs uh, that have been requested by the European Commission, starting from the um, strategic implementation plan and the work plan, then the first reports of the working groups, the stakeholder forum event, and at the end of 2020, the uh, finalization of the documentation regarding how the uh, European Open Science Cloud should look like as from 2021 and how the governance of uh, this entity should be further defined. Next slide. We have uh, several principles guiding us uh, since the beginning of the project. First of all, the consortium is based on the, has been created in the safeguard in the independence and neutrality towards the community. We work under the super, direct supervision of the executive board. Uh, at this time, we have an interim character with an enabling and advisory approach. So uh, the, in order to uh, give at the end of our project the idea of how the EOSC secretariat, so the structure, the administrative, organizational, the continuous structure uh, supporting the European Open Science Cloud should look like after 2021. The idea is to have a, a user-centric EOSC implementation, making use of the co-creation budget the secretary has uh, uh, tries to be as flexible as and agile as possible and especially wants to guarantee transparency and openness of the outcomes of the related to the outcomes of the uh, governance uh, bodies uh, outputs and the way the uh, funds that we have received has been used by the community Uh, the first way uh, the EOSC Secretariat is uh, supporting the executive board and the working groups is uh, through studies uh, which are outlined uh, by the uh, working groups, uh, then are submitted to open calls, open calls that are drafted together by the European Open Science uh, Cloud Secretariat and the executive board and open calls that are published on the EOSC Secretariat website and possibly other calls that will be on upon requests of the uh, working groups and the executive board and the uh, European Commission as well. Um, in the description of action, so the main, the foundational document of our project, we have already identified uh, three topics on which we are going to launch uh, studies. Uh, we are just waiting for a few details coming from the executive board in order to draft uh, fully and in details the uh, open calls. These three confirmed topics are investigating innovative business models for the European Open Science Cloud, the rules of participation for service providers and users, and legal and organizational framework for sustainable governance. Others, as I said, other studies will be conducted based on the needs of the executive board and the working groups. But the community can uh, also uh, provide uh, ideas about uh, further studies that we can commission. So uh, the whole community of stakeholders, and I'm in this very moment addressing myself to the viewers, uh, the whole community is uh, kindly invited to go on the EOSC Secretariat in EU, EU and submit uh, suggestions, proposals, ideas for possible studies that can be of support to the EOSC uh, governance structures, especially the executive board and the working groups. You have already heard an explanation uh, from, about the working groups, about what they are doing, what are their needs, what are their possible needs. And uh, so the community is really free to uh, reach out for the US Secretariat and submit ideas uh, for studies. We will evaluate and uh, according to the feedback we receive from the uh, working group chairs and the executive, but we might be uh, willing to support 
these studies with the co-creation budget we have been allocated to by the Commission. Next slide. But the co-creation opportunities, the opportunities for using the co-creation budget that uh, uh, is owned at this time by the European Secretariat does not stop to uh, studies. I really invite you all to go on the US Secretariat website and uh, click on the link of funding opportunities. Uh, there you will be able to submit to us any kind of ideas, proposals, suggestions of re regarding events, consultation meetings, workshops, publications, uh, possible advisory boards, who can apply for the co-creation opportunities, for the co-creation requests and budget. Uh, any individual or natural person residing in the member states of the European Union and the associated countries, and applicants who are not receiving support from other uh, in funding instruments like EU or national uh, projects for their activities, so that we avoid uh, double dipping. Again, please let me point out, in case the, my message was lost, the Secretariat is very happy to support any kind of activities. I repeat again, workshops, events, conferences, consultation meetings, advisory boards, publications, studies, uh, be, use your creativity for any kind of activities that might be, that you deem are uh, su uh, supporting the uh, take up of the uh, European Open Science Cloud and can support the EOSC governance. Next slide. Uh, some criteria, again, uh, we, uh, are have, we are using the same eligibility criteria of the Horizon 2020 project. Uh, the uh, main uh, focus of the activities are uh, about support of the European Open Science Cloud, the governance, executive board, working groups and the stakeholder community. Of course, we have to, you have to demonstrate these activities, have to demonstrate that they are bringing added value to the existing uh, initiatives, projects, uh, and uh, uh, events of the European Open Science Cloud. And uh, they are bringing benefits uh, to the community. We have set some uh, KPIs that you can find in the description of the co-creation uh, budget uh, requests and application procedures on uh, our website. Just to give an idea about how the process uh, is going to look like, the applicant send the request form. There is a first uh, short moment of analysis of the request in order to see that all, uh, all parts have been completed, that the uh, request falls in the scope of the uh, of the call uh, that uh, all the elements are need, all needed elements are there. We offer then, in case uh, something is not perfect, we offer the uh, possibility to the applicant to adjust the proposals. Then there's the, uh, again the main evaluation phase uh, brought forward by the uh, Secretariat Steering Group, which means the 11 partners of the US Secretariat gathering together and and uh, uh, debating and discussing, and finally approving or rejecting, if it's the case, uh, the request, and then we communicate the result to the, to the applicant. The whole process goes from 30 to 45 days approximately. Next slide. Here uh, you have uh, just an idea on where to apply. Uh, as I said, it's on our website, on the US Secretariat website. Here you have the links. If you have any question about co-creation uh, budget uh, and uh, applications, please feel free to send your emails to the address you see here. And on the right, you can see, you, know, uh, you have an example of the uh, uh, request form that applicants have to fill in in order to send their applications. Uh, you have, will see, we will receive uh, other information and updates uh, about uh, co-creation requests 
um, and about the open calls that we're going to launch regarding studies on, by registering on annual newsletters and going uh, frequently to visit uh, the US Secretariat website. Uh, but uh, opportunities for engagement for the stakeholder community and to engage and to come near to uh, get to know what the EOS governance is doing and the EOS community as a whole is doing does not stop there too, doesn't stop to um, the co-creation budget and the studies. We have, uh, we are creating, we have uh, our um, organizing workshops and events as you will hear uh, in, a, in a few seconds. Uh, we are organizing the webinars as you as you, you can witness right now, we have our newsletters, we have the EOSC kiosk that is uh, present in many uh, EOSC related uh, events. We have the uh, liaison platform, which you have been uh, hearing in the intervention from Sarah Jones before me. So a point, a place, a virtual place in on our uh, website where you will receive the feedback from about the out outcomes of the working groups and you will be uh, you will have the possibility of offer your feedbacks your views your proposals in order to support the uh, work of the uh, working groups so please uh, uh, have uh, right now uh, uh, a quick look of, of this slide and please uh, we, I, I really invite you to register, follow and then and engage in the many opportunities that we want to offer to the community because it's, we are uh, moving, we, uh, the, one of the main guidelines we have adopted is that it's the community that is going to help uh, shape the European Open Science Cloud. And next slide. So uh, one, uh, we have two main uh, events uh, where the US uh, Secretariat is going to be present and uh, with the US Secretariat also uh, representations of the uh, EOS uh, governance bodies. The first is the um, uh, event in Helsinki next week on the 22nd of October, the named International Research Data Community Contributed to EOS an event that uh, is collocated with the Research Data Alliance Plenary uh, in the, on the, from the 23rd to the 25th of October in Helsinki. And there it will be possible for the community, especially for the RDA community, but the invitation is of course uh, extended to the whole uh, stakeholders community of the Open Science Cloud to uh, exploit this uh, first opportunity to get to know live the um, uh, members of the governance board, the executive board and the working groups experts uh, in order to uh, gather uh, their ideas and to provide them with your feedbacks and questions. So uh, please uh, start considering these first uh, opportunities. And then the next one, the EOSC Symposium. So uh, in the EOSC Symposium end of November in Budapest, uh, the European Open Science Cloud Secretariat together with other initiatives like the EOSC Hub, Jean, Open Air, uh, and so on, uh, will uh, uh, organize the first event that is really direct to the stakeholder community. Uh, we, you can see uh, on our website the uh, new the program the, that has been uh, recently uh, drafted. We are all. We have also launched a call for contributions. So please uh, feel free to submit uh, your contributions for the breakout sessions, for the plenary sessions, and the poster, for the poster galleries. A uh, few, few uh, hints uh, and a short comment about this call for contributions. In for the, uh, for as far as the breakout session is concerned, all the received contributions 
will be uh, shared in advance with the uh, working groups and the most relevant contributions might become part of the session itself in the form of talks uh, in the panel. Uh, and after the event also a short publication will be released so in order to include contributions from the stakeholders. And uh, regarding the plenary sessions, the symposium second plenary session on Tuesday the 26th of November will be fully dedicated to use cases uh, that uh, use cases that are uh, addressing societal challenges. So another invite for myself uh, and, and on behalf of the secretariat is that if you have addressed or you are planning to address a societal challenge using services and resources provided by the European research infrastructures or inf infrastructure, then this is indeed uh, your call. Um, so again, go on our website, look at the program and make your voice heard by us, by the community and by the EOSC governance. This is the final message that uh, I want to share uh, with the participants uh, of the webinars. We really are there to offer you any possibility to make your voice, your activity, your voice to be heard, your activity to be showcased and also supporting even through uh, funding. So visit our website and stay always tuned on uh, US Secretariat. Thank you very much, Andrea. That, that's uh, very comprehensive as well. So what we'll do is we'll move to some, some questions now. We've had a couple in. Uh, the first question is um, whether organisations such as non-governmental organisations can apply for co-creation activities. So that, that's to you, Andrea. Yes, of course. Uh, as I said, any entity, be it a, a, a natural person, be it a legal entity that, that are based in the European Union or in the associated countries, they, they can all apply for co-creation uh, budget requests and funds. Okay, thank you very much. And then there was uh, actually a I know this has been um, addressed in the in the chat already by by Sarah, but uh, whether or not uh, with with Brexit going on, uh, if if this affects the UK's so organisations from the the UK, their their involvement. Yeah, so I mean, it inevitably will at some point and somehow, but I think a lot of things are still to be defined. Um, so I put a comment that people can hopefully see in the answers area. Um, that in terms of existing projects they will continue um, new projects we probably wouldn't be eligible for funding and in terms of things like our governance board um, representatives i don't think they'll be eligible um, after brexit date um, so there will be less involvement um, and in terms of what the uk does in terms of contributing towards EOSC in the future i think lots of things are unclear in the uk at the moment um, there was also a question about the comms, um, which I answered in the chat, um, just explaining that that's a number of people from the exec board on the comms group. So Katrin Sturva, um, Natalia Manola and Ron Decker, um, and together with um, reps from the EC and Secretariat, they're defining the brand and a trademark for EOSC and um, how that will be applied. Um, because at the moment we've got a lot of separate project identities and we need things that are part of EOSC to be um, kind of branded differently in future. So they're also thinking about who can use that brand. Thank you very much, Sarah, as well. Um, and then we have a, a question for, for, from Tobias regarding some of the information about the, the co-creation open calls on the, on the website. What we'll do is we'll, we'll check that out. So thanks for, thanks for spotting spotting the text there so we'll we'll check that out and get back to you Tobias uh, on uh, on on some of the texts which run on the website and um, I wanted to ask um, Sarah and, uh, and 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 Andrea as well the, the input because we have the EOSC symposium coming on I know Andrea you put touched on this uh, quite a bit um, but I wanted to uh, also also from from Sarah how 
I wondered if you could, from a, from a working group uh, perspective, how important the, um, the symposium is in terms of, um, you know, it being a kind of first, well not first, but a, a major event in terms of outreach and, and, and contact with the, with the EOSC uh, community. So from a, from a working group chair perspective, uh, how, could, maybe you could share with the participants how, how, the event, how you hope the event will, uh, will help your, your working group. Yeah, definitely. So, so the way the program's been structured, um, the, the chairs of the different working groups are coordinating various sessions and we may collaborate with other projects on doing that or there is also an open call out at the moment. So if people submit papers, they might be um, brought into the sessions. I think um, for some groups it will be, there are things we want to put forward and consult on. So things like the rules of participation and the PID policy. So we have things that we actively want to um, engage the community about and get feedback on. In other cases, you know, work's just beginning. So it's good to understand better what's going on in the community. And this provides a vehicle, you know, to, to engage to different projects and initiatives and learn about what's happening so that we can then use that to shape the EOSC. So I think there's lots of different ways that we can engage. Um, but I, I think it's really important that there is a lot of consultation and that's what I really hope for from that event. Um, I hope there's lots of discussion. It's not just about you know presenting um, different products or services. It really needs to be about us kind of co-creating the EOSC and working together collectively to drive that agenda forward. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, I think that's, that's, a, that's a good answer. Yeah, it's, I mean, this is a, this is a major event um, for, for the community, so a great opportunity to, uh, to really you know, meet and, and interact with the, with the working group members as well, um, as well as an opportunity for everybody to, to get together and, uh, and, and attend some interesting sessions and, and network, of course, as well. Um, okay, so with that, I have a... Uh, a uh, question regarding the slides all of the slides will be uh, available after the webinar um, so um, so you'll be able to access um, service slides for example uh, straight away um, okay so what we'll do now is um, we'll move over to um, Mi Michelle Shoup uh, Michelle we're gonna hand over to you um, for the for the next presentation okay thank you nick and good afternoon everyone uh, my name is michel scoop i'm from dg research and innovation working in the open science unit and actually we do work on eosc uh, in close collaboration with our colleagues in dg connect unfortunately uh, lina monari could not uh, get a technical connection to this webinar so uh, i'm going to go through her last slides, which relate to the EOSC concertation meeting that we have co-organized uh, DG Connect and DGRTD together. Um, this event took place uh, on the 9th and 10th of September, and it was a very first um, occasion to uh, bring all uh, projects funded under Horizon 2020. Uh, related directly to EOSC. So actually, there were more than 30 projects represented in this workshop. Uh, together, and that's important, together with representatives from the governance. So members from the governance board and members from the uh, executive board. And I think that was really uh, the main interest of the workshop. It was really to allow uh, the project representatives to get connected to the work of the governance and also to understand the process which is ongoing as well as to identify who are the main contact points through whom they could pass information uh, to the, the ongoing governance process because we believe that uh, from the EU side there has been a big investment about 250 million euros in a series of 35 projects. Uh, this is excellent, uh, but of course we need to build on best practices. And when I say we, it's not only the commission, but it's all the members who are working in the governance. 
So this workshop, I think, uh, was a very good occasion to sound uh, the current understanding by the infra EOSC community with respect to the ongoing work by the governance and vice versa, it was excellent for the governance members to realize the richness of uh, ongoing research activities and to also identify uh, key deliveries uh, that have to be taken into account in the current analysis. So that's for the EOSC uh, concertation meeting. Uh, I think this meeting, uh, a little bit like this webinar, uh, is actually, uh, was actually uh, driven by the need to bring more transparency and openness. One of these principles that have been uh, presented earlier in this webinar. So I think I also would like to thank the Secretariat for organizing this uh, series of webinars because I really think that this uh, help uh, to ensure transparency uh, on the process. Uh, now let's go back to some basics. EOSC is about building a trusted and open environment which will provide a seamless access to data and interoperable services. So clearly the idea is to break silos, to end with a silo approach, to try to avoid isolated solutions and to build uh, an ecosystem for research and science in Europe. So of course this concerns many organizations across countries and across communities. So that's why we really insist on this co-creation process. I think Sarah mentioned this co-creation process. We see uh, the call in Fryosk as one way to do co-creation because with uh, 30 plus projects, it means that we have hundreds of organizations from the all 28 member states and even beyond, as some associated countries as well, represented in active in, in the prototyping of the building blocks of the EOSC. So that's very important and I'd like to mention maybe a few, uh, few projects that have started this year, at least from our side in DGRTD. Uh, we have launched about 10 projects for a total amount of 100 million euros, so it's a big investment. Uh, in two types of areas. Uh, first, uh, a cluster of projects related to the S3 infrastructures. And the aim there was really to see, uh, and is still to see, how we can connect S3 infrastructures to the EOSC through a cluster approach. These projects will also help to develop fair compliance tools and compliance of re repositories used by different um, scientific communities. In this case, we speak about earth sciences, life sciences, uh, particle physics, astronomy, social science, sciences and humanities. So this is uh, one group of five projects that has started this year and that will go on for three to, five, to four years. So it's just starting now, but it will deliver in the coming four years. Uh, the second strand of projects I'd like to mention that also have kicked off recently, meaning in June or in September, are a cluster of five projects looking not this time at S3 infrastructures, but rather at national initiatives and data infrastructures. It's very clear that these infrastructure play a key role to sustain the EOSC, and they are already well connected to scientific users. So the idea through those projects is really to support some level of convergence, uh, some gradual alignment of policies, of practices, in view of uh, later EOSC connections. Uh, and they do this uh, not only uh, through looking at technical aspects, but also uh, business models, uh, policy, policies driving those national initiatives, uh, training and skills, so it's a quite uh, over, um, holistic approach to map what is ex existing and to assess and to promote connection or maturity for connection in the EOSC. Uh, here we have five projects and actually they cover different uh, 
countries, but if you put all these projects together, most of the member states in the EU28 uh, are considered. So that's about the 10 projects we uh, are following in DGRTD. Um, Lena could have told you more about uh, projects uh, funded from DG Connect side. Um, Michel, we've, we've actually got Lena on now, so... Um, oh, wonderful. Okay. Uh, shall I go on or shall, I, shall she step in uh, regarding DG Connect projects? It might be an idea, yeah, maybe, maybe Lena. Um, would you like to would you like to step in now or you can you hear me yes we can hear you yeah okay very good okay so yeah i can give a quick overview finally sorry for uh, you know technical uh <laughs> digi connect is not so digi connect so i can i can quickly go through the 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 the, the last call which uh, we had um of college because we're Anyway, so uh, if you can go just in the beginning, one slide down, okay? Can you go back one slide? Okay. 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 So here, I think that's zero two. Uh, uh, was worth 28.5 million euros, and the project that got selected from that. You can go for the next slide. Uh, okay, so here, uh, yet another one. This is uh, the call sort of ID. You can go to the next slide. And here, of course, you know, this is what we were looking for prototyping new innovative services, which were practically uh, finding gaps in the service offering of Rails Cub that would actually complement the current service portfolio. You can go to the next one. And okay, this is the impact, you know, this is the core text. If uh, just like to go quickly with this where we're running relates to the, to the project that I actually selected. You can go to the next slide. Okay, so um, sometimes I have to read these titles as well twice, but you know, once you read it, it's in certain technology mind you understand. So this is the first one is CS3. Mesh for EOS. So, this is a project of 6.5.8 million euros starting 1st of January. Uh, which the idea is that to, um, uh, the project will, con will deliver a set of the art connected infrastructure to use effective scientific collaboration across the entire Federation of Data Sharing according to their principles. And the idea is that the project will deliver a core of the scientific educational infrastructure, cloud storage services in Europe through the Language Federation of Existing. So you can share, uh, share services, so the CS3 services and integration of them with the, uh, the application workflow. So this is something which is quite new, and, and we hope that we can, uh, we can this is a, a new, um, sort of all these projects are actually at three PRL 8 or 9 level already, so they are quite ready to make, even though we're talking about prototyping, but it's very obvious, it's very close to, to, to operational uh, services. You can go to the next uh, slide. Uh, the next one is called Niania. So here we're talking about uh, bringing uh, the thematic services under EOSC. So here we're talking about three large communities, um, uh, atmosphere, underwater, and space. And, uh, and through this project, again, uh, about five and a half million, maybe 5.6 million euros, starting order the 1st of November. Um, uh, the idea of this is obviously to, to coordinate and deliver an integration uh, to EOSC of innovative thematic services in this area and at the same time enable a transition of the respective communities to the EOS concept and the open science principles. You can go to the next one. And the third one is called INORDE, Intelligent Open Data Exploration, which then again is uh, allowing users uh, through this uh, project, the user should interact with data in a more dialectic, dialectic and intuitive way similar to dialogue with a human, and to achieve this, they will offer a suite of uh, agile architectural purpose sustainable services for exploration open data sets, and this in particular, in these, through these three use case providers, one of them being Council Biomarker Research, one, the other one, Research and Innovation Policy Making, and the Physics, which means you are contribution. So four years, starting in uh, first November, and then going on to October 22. Okay, next one. 
And then we have Triple, which is uh, the one project that actually targets the SSH community. Uh, it's all, they aim to develop a full multilingual multicultural solution for the discovery and reuse of SSH resources. And there we're going to have a platform that provides a discovery experience and a variety of connected and ready tools and, and, and will aim to allow uh, building of interdisciplinary projects and to develop plus scale scientific missions. And there again, we're talking about the same budget level of uh, EU contribution of 5.6 million. We go to the next one. And cost for cloud is the last one of uh, this selected batch. So here we're we talking about uh, citizen science, so transforming co designed citizen observatory services for the EOS. Uh, uh, EOSCA. So uh, in this case, we're looking at the innovative services, uh, which will actually allow uh, bringing in citizen science projects uh, as a service for the scientific community and society and providing new data services. And in this one, uh, there are new digital services that will be developed through the integration of, uh, of the citizen science products generated by the providers. And of course, uh, following open standards to ensure the integrability and offer them again through AirScap to both traditional and digital sciences. So, here we're talking about nearly 6 million euro contribution and we began um, in 2023. And I think this was the end of the batch, if I remember correctly, can go to the next. Yes, okay. No, not yet. This is the project which is the follow up uh, to the project uh, which developed the portal. So this, uh, since it's still in the final stage of negotiations, we will not disclose the name, but it is the one call that was selected from the infra 2019-2 call. And it has 15 partners. It will uh, start normally the 1st of December with the 2 million euros. And you can see here what are the objectives of the, of the project. So it is in principle to enhance the scalability of scientific services and data resources. Uh, by further developing and widening the AOS catalog to the four key objectives. So it has a service provider interface, accelerate the deployment and uptake, increase the user demand, and enable access to thematic cloud and services and data. So it's sort of the portal 2.0 project that will be running as of the end of this year for two years. And I think here we are at the end of the batch. We can go to the next slide because I think I have my Conservation meeting slides, yeah, exactly. So, Michelle already introduced this. Uh, it was a true collaboration effort of the GRTB Connect and, uh, and the Governance uh, Executive Boards, and it was very busy two days. And, uh, and as Michelle already said, I think it was, uh, was a very good initiative for, for, for meeting in this sort of tripartite uh, constellation. And uh, we hope that we continue these discussions, of course, formally in the boards, but also in the next. Uh, versions of, of various stakeholder events uh, like uh, the ones coming up in uh, later in the year in, in Budapest, for example. So here I finish. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lena. Thank you and thanks for your uh, for your patience earlier as well. So um, okay, so we currently don't have any any questions for the um, for the two speakers from the commission, which is uh, which is novel. So um, so I wondered maybe I, I could ask you um, both on uh, maybe a, a question because we see the slide here that we've still got up on the on the consultation meeting and going forward um, I wanted to just ask how important the you know the, the collaboration between the two units uh, is for 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 the commission. This is a question. Yeah, this is the question. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, I mean, obviously, from my perspective, you know, these are the common files that is not very uncommon at the Commission that different DGs, not just one units, but different DGs, they share different files. And throughout the, the last two years, we have actually already executed the work program jointly. So the entire schools have been executed either by DigiConnect or by DigiRTV. But this is, of course, only about the funding and about this part, which is an important part. But nevertheless, of course, we are very close to cooperating with the with the, our sister unit, uh, Open Science in DGRTD, on everything practically. I mean, you know, we are constantly in, in contact with uh, looking at different uh, concepts. We are looking at what comes out from the boards. We are looking at that. So we have we have very very close cooperation with uh, with the 
future actually. I don't know if Michelle wants to add something and will obviously continue to, to have in the, in the future. So I don't know if Michelle wants to add anything, but uh, from my perspective, it's pretty clearly and from the GConnex perspective, uh, the collaboration works really, really well. Yeah, uh, thank you, Lina. Thank you, Nick, for the question. I think I, I'd like to enlarge the question uh, beyond, beyond the collaboration between Connect and RTD. I think the success of EOSC relies on the collaboration between two communities, the scientific community and the infrastructure community. So, I mean, of course, collaboration at unit level between two DGs in the Commission is important. Um, but I think uh, we need to have collaboration between two very large and heterogeneous uh, communities in Europe. And that's probably uh, the challenge uh, at a wider scale. Uh, but I think we are all in the governance. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we are all in the governance ready to take a challenge. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so with that, I think what we can do is, is start closing the, the webinar. Um, what I'd like to do is, is close on a, on a final question to, to each of our panelists, again, which, which focuses on the next couple of events, which Andrea and uh, Sarah um, focused on in, in their presentations. That is the, the EOSC workshop at the uh, RDA event in, in Helsinki um, at the end of this month and then the EOSC Symposium in, in Budapest uh, at the end of November. So, so the question is, um, um, wh how, with these events which are key for, for engagement with, with stakeholders and, and the community, um, what do you hope to gain from this uh, in, your, in your respective roles? Because there'll be major events, lots of people participating and a lot of uh, valuable discussions. So maybe I could put that um, question first to, to Andrea. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Well, uh, what we want to see is, uh, first of all, to hear the feedback and to establish first, then before having the feedback, to establish the, the channel, a continuous challenge uh, of this event will be the foundational stone between the uh, EOSC governance and especially the working groups and the community. It's true that we have already delayed the liaison platform on our website, uh, but still it has to be further promoted. And I think that the promotion can be uh, further achieved if there is a direct contact, uh, a first opportunity for getting to know each other, to have a first understanding a real understanding of what the governance stands for and what the, when, what the stakeholder community wants to see and especially uh, the, the bricks they want to bring to the construction of the, of the building. So uh, this is uh, what we want to see, what we would like to see, what the, the main objective of this event, especially the EOSC Symposium. It's true that we have already uh, stakeholders engaged in the several projects and initiatives that are uh, supporting the uh, events, as I said, the Secretariat, EOSC Hub, Open Air, and so on and so forth, but they are just a representation of the stakeholders. I think as we have to reach the broad community of 1.7 million research in Europe and we want to go beyond, this is, uh, and to empower them at the end of the story to, 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 in order to have ownership of the European Open Science Cloud, uh, this is the, the, the main objective of, of the event. So uh, bring the EU's closer to the community and bring the community closer to the EU's governance. Thank you, uh, Andrea. And uh, for you, Sarah. Uh, yeah, so um, I think there's still, you know, within the community, I think there's still a lot of confusion about what EOSC is or who it's for or how to engage. And I think the only way you can really address this is through dialogue. And I think it's important to get people together um, in a room and, and talk. So I think these, these events are really important for that, to bring people together and to discuss um, ways forward. Um, Specifically for from like the working group perspective, 
as I mentioned before, we're not reinventing wheels. Our work is around all of the activity that's happening in the different projects or um, in national initiatives or different groups like GEDE. And I think it's really important for working group members to have um, good contacts with all of those initiatives. And I see particularly the RDA and, and the symposium as, as ways that we can start to foster some of those links so that we have good relationships and we're, we know what activities are going on that can then feed into our work. Um, the user angle for me is really central as well. I'm not entirely sure within RDA and uh, I don't know yet who will sign up to the symposium, but I think it's really important we engage with research communities um, and the end users of EOSC um, and through either these events or some others, we, we need to target that community specifically too. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, it's a very good point on, on the actual end users of the EOSC, uh, which we hope to achieve at, at, at the event. Okay, so if we move to, to Michelle for a, a final comment. Yes. Uh, well, I think uh, it's all about um, feedback and engagement. So clearly, these are two events, uh, the one in Helsinki and the one in Budapest, uh, that are key to um, expose some initial ideas coming out of the governance and see what the reactions will be. Because in the end, these are strategic orientations that will concern uh, many communities across Europe and even beyond. So um, these uh, workshops uh, are really essential and I hope that we can multiply them uh, in 2020 um, and maybe have a, a rather structured framework for structuring this dialogue that we desperately need with the communities. And I think we have already identified many different stakeholder groups and I know that the Secretariat is working at addressing each of those constituent constituencies in a specific mode. So that's very, very needed, very welcome. Uh, but clearly Budapest will be for everybody at the same time. So there will be many voices to be heard. Uh, but again, that's, that's, uh, that's the advantage and the objective of the game to give the voice speakers to the communities of users and providers. Thank you, Michelle. Very nice. Good, good comments on uh, you know, uh, structure framework for dialogue, which we hope to achieve at, at the event. So, and finally, Lena, for, for your final comment. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, definitely. I think everything's already been said. I think it is kind of process which involves so many stakeholders from different communities, as Michelle rightly pointed out. Of course, the, 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 the fact that we work together, of course, we work you know, as representatives and links to the communities. The only way to reflect really truly what the, the constituency wants and to validate what is being, obviously, the practical reason as well, being discussed a little bit in closer quarters and smaller quarters more than that, it's very important because otherwise uh, we end up working in silos, we end up working in other towers, and everybody already as the consultation meeting in a small scale showed that there's so much knowledge and so much information and so much enthusiasm apparently for building else that we cannot let this momentum go. And this is why I think it's very important for people to make, even though it means a physical trip, either go to Helsinki, go to Budapest, but be there, because this is the only way, kindly, that we can actually really, and we're trying to do our best, really to engage as large stakeholder community as possible, because we don't have that much time. I mean, EOSC 2.0 is supposed to start 2021, and, and we have a little bit more than a year to come up with uh, what it will look like. So that's why, from my perspective as well, on our behalf, uh, we warmly welcome all uh, participants to join in these and the other forthcoming joint events. Thank you very much, Lena. And thank you very much to all our speakers, to Andrea, to Sarah, to Michelle. Uh, and thank you for, for you all for, for joining us. So we've heard, you know, there's a, there's a massive amount of information from the, from the EOS community. It's, it's time to engage. 
Uh, the symposium and the RDA, the event at RDA will be a time to engage and get feedback from the community and also a moment for reflection as well to deal with what, what, the, what the various communities needs are and to discuss, to discuss how, these, how these can be addressed. And Lena mentioned an important word is momentum. So with these two events, with the concert, joint consultation meeting and with hopefully webinars like this, which will continue, uh, we hope to really create a lot of discussion around the, the governance of the European Open Science Cloud. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone again. And uh, hopefully we'll either see you in Helsinki or in, in Budapest. The registration is open for the symposium. We have limited spaces, of course, as with other, other events. And we fully expect this to be uh, a, very, um, a very interesting event for everybody with a, a lot of interest regarding participation. So make sure you uh, register. So thank you, everybody. And we'll uh, see you soon.